Hi, we're going to look at an example here of showing that a set is not a subspace of a known vector space. So we're going to be looking at using our subspace theorem, or as I called it in our class notes, the very useful theorem. So the overlying vector space is the vector space of all differentiable functions, and the scalars are just the set of real numbers. And then the set that we're looking at here is the set of functions that are solutions to the differential equation y prime equals 2x. All right, so basically what we want to show here is those properties in that subspace theorem that one or maybe perhaps both of those properties fail since the problem here told us that the set is not a subspace for that vector space. All right, so I've got two properties to consider, additive closure and scalar multiplication closure, and I'm using those symbols that we talked about in your notes here, but you can just write other kinds of symbols, ordinary plus and multiplication if you want here. Uh, but for additive closure, what I want to think about is that I want to start with two functions, I'm just going to call them f of x and g of x, that are in the set w, so that would mean that they are solutions to that differential equation. And what I want to think about is, is there sum also in the set w? And if the answer to that is yes, then I do have additive closure. And if the answer to that is no, then I do not have additive closure. All right, so I want to start with these two functions that are in that set w. So the first thing that I'm going to write down here is, well, what does it mean then to say that those two things are in the set w? Well, it means they make that differential equation true. So if f of x and g of x are in the set w, then f prime of x is 2x, and g prime of x is also 2x. That's what it means to be in the set. It satisfies that differential equation, and so there's that differential equation using f of x and g of x as our, our function, y as a function of x. All right, so then what I want to think about is, is there sum in the set? All right, so what it would mean for their sum to be in the set is that the derivative of the sum of those two functions should also then be equal to 2x if it's in the set. So this is the question I'm trying to answer. If I start with two functions that satisfy this differential equation, does their sum also satisfy this differential equation? And so maybe you should pause the video and think about that a little bit. Maybe even look at some examples and think about that a little bit. And then restart it to see if you're right. Okay, so in just thinking about how differentiation works, if I have the sum of two functions and I want to find the derivative of that, I can just do that term by term. So I would be wanting to have f prime of x plus g prime of x then, and I want to know is that then going to equal 2x. And if we remember that f prime of x is 2x and g prime of x is 2x, since those are both solutions to that differential equation, I can just replace f prime of x with 2x, right? So knowing that f and g are in that set w means they're solutions to the differential equation. So f and g do satisfy these two relationships here that I just highlighted. And so all I did was replace the f prime with what it's equal to and also replace the g prime with what it's equal to. And at this point you should say, um, no, not usually. Uh, 2x plus 2x is 4x, which is not the same as 2x. So no, I don't have additive closure. So this additive closure fails, or we would say that the set is not closed with respect to addition. Okay, so at that point, actually, I'm done with this question. Show that the following set is not a subspace. So if either of those conditions in that subspace theorem fail, the set is not a subspace. And so I've shown a condition that fails, therefore I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and talk about scalar multiplication closure. That one also fails for this one. So on this problem, you really could have started with either condition here and used that to show that the set W is not a subspace of the vector space of all differentiable functions. All right, so to think about scalar multiplication closure, 
I'm going to start with a function f of x that's in w and just an arbitrary scalar in my set of real numbers. And what I want to think about is if I start with a, a function that's in my set, so again, that the defining characteristic of what makes something be in this set is that it satisfies that differential equation. So its derivative is 2x. What I want to think about is does c times f of x does that also have to be in the set w, right? So again, thinking about what it would mean to be in the set w, it would mean that the derivative of that new function, c times f of x, the derivative of that, I use prime here to denote derivative, I want to know is that going to equal to 2x, right? And so when I did this before, I kind of did it in general, but you also can think about that for just a specific scalar and a specific function to show that that's going to fail. And when you're showing something fails, you can show that just fails with a single example, a counterexample. I don't need to show that it fails in all cases, just a single case. So for example, if my constant is say 3 and my function is say x squared, right, that's a function whose derivative is 2x, then C, this is in the set w because its derivative is 2x, then my c times f of x would be 3x squared and that's not in the set w since the derivative of 3x squared is 6x which is not 2x, so not a solution to the differential equation. Alright, so I showed here that that set is not a subspace of the set of all differentiable functions in two different ways. First, I show that the set is not closed under addition and I could have stopped there. Second, I show that it's not closed under scalar multiplication. I could have done either of those so to show that. The other thing that I did here was that for the first one, I did it here in general. I just looked at my f function and my g function, the defining characteristic of what it meant to be in the set and showed that in general that fails. For the second one, I showed failure using a counter example here. I just need to provide really one example that shows when it fails in order to show that this is not a vector space or a subspace of the set of all differentiable functions. And so kind of thinking about how to show something fails is actually easier because all you need is a single example. If you're trying to show that something holds, you need to show that more in general. So we'll look at some of that in the next video.